What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. It is a beautiful Saturday morning on the island of Oahu. But if you are new to the channel, my name's Chad Naho'oleva. This is the Lone Star Hawaiian Garage. We got the whole fleet lined up in the driveway, but uh, we got some problems with my truck, which we're working on today. I had to clean the office a little bit. That's why all the vehicles are outside. But let's go ahead and bring this thing back in. And we're gonna talk about what went wrong. Oh, we're gonna have to pull the back end off. Whoa, look who's here. How'd you get outside? Look at the truck back in the garage. Hey. Oh, thank you, bud. Did you bring dirt in the garage for me? <laughs> yep, thanks, bud. <laughs> All right, guys, so here's the plan with kids. You addict them to cars at a young age. That way, when they become of dating age, they have no interest in girls. They spend all their money and all their time on cars. You never have any problems as he's trying to throw it in reverse. There. So as we kick this video off today, guys, I have no idea what the results are going to be at this point. This is one shooting from the hip. I think I know what's going on. I'm really hoping this is the matter of fact because a few months ago, I started noticing something. So to kick it off and voila. And for those of you who are new to the channel, 5.3 liter Vortec V8 Can-Am cold air intake system. That's it. But what we're looking at today is right here and my worries are confirmed. And this is an issue I've been noticing over the last few months is my brake fluid is leaking out of somewhere. And again, that's a serious issue to have. There's one thing more important than the power coming out of your engine, and that's your brakes. Because no matter how fast you go, you gotta eventually stop without hitting something. Are you guys good with brakes? We're okay. We got a saying here. The brakes don't stop it, something will. Now what I've been monitoring and looking at really closely, and part of the reason I cleaned up my garage today is I'm looking for some kind of trace of fluid on my garage floor, but there's nothing. There's no fluid coming from anywhere underneath my truck that's showing, hey, my brake fluid is leaking from a line, from the drum, from the disc brakes, I don't know. But what I'm assuming is it's coming from the rear drums. A lot of you have heard this. When I do cold starts on these videos, I go and pull out of the garage and there's an unbearable squeaking noise coming from the rear of the truck. So I'm guessing here, and I haven't pulled this off, either the wheel cylinder has gone bad and is leaking and causing some kind of a squeak. I'm hoping that's the case. So our first step, once we just confirmed that my fluid is in fact lower than it was a few weeks ago, we're gonna pull off the rear end. We're gonna start driver's side. I'm gonna pull off the tire, pull off the drum. We're gonna take a close look at what is going on inside the drum itself. And hopefully we find traces of fluid. If we do, we know, okay, that's at least one of the problems. We'll be able to fix that. So without further ado, let's get to it. Let's jack this back end up, pull the rear wheels and tires off, and then we'll get to the drum. Told myself to push and never stop. I've been stressed out watching both these hands around the clock. With my eyes wide, trying to get the pain around my shot. Whole world getting blurry to me, answers getting lost. So I watch my back and keep it moving to the front. And remember that the world's yours. Do it how you want. You All right, we're only about five minutes in and we're already having problems. I can't get the drum off. Real life DIY because this is always what happens. As you see there, that's all the brake dust that has fallen out of the bottom of this drum. But regardless, I need these bolts. So what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna run the lows real quick, grab a bolt that's gonna thread in here and here, because as it threads in, it'll just push the drum out and be so much better than just whacking the crap out of it until I break something. So let's run to the store real quick, grab a bolt that's gonna work there, and we'll be back in the garage to continue. We are back from Lowe's and this was our solution. It's the three quarter inch bolt coarse threads, and this is what's gonna fit into this drum here. Now, realistically, I could take a massive hammer and bang the crap out of this, and it would knock loose and I could pull it off, but I'm most likely gonna be reusing this drum. These are like a 100 bucks each here in Hawaii, so I don't wanna replace them if I don't have to. So we just gotta turn it with a 14 millimeter wrench till it pushes itself out. Oh, there it goes. Look at all that brake dust. Well guys, it's not very often you pull something apart on your car and hope to find something leaking. Brake shoes are pretty much gone, so we need to replace those. And besides just a tremendous amount of brake dust in here, there's really nothing wrong. 
So we're gonna replace the brake shoes since this is all off, that's for sure. Let's check the other side. So we're gonna pull apart the passenger side and hopefully we find something, some kind of residual fluid over there because this brake fluid, it's going somewhere, don't know where. All right, you guys, passenger side is off and I think we found the problem. I got this handy dandy. Why don't I just say handy dandy? Looking close there, it's gonna be hard in the camera, but you see a lot of brake dust that's clung on right at the edge of the wheel cylinder there. Now that brake dust is extremely dark, which means there's some kind of fluid that is leaking from the wheel cylinder, which I think is the problem. Again, this is a very, very slow leak to a point of I top off the reservoir probably once every six months, but it is leaking and I think we found it. So we definitely need wheel cylinders. We're gonna go ahead and replace both. Since we have everything off, you might as well replace both all together. We're gonna run to the auto parts store, pick up two wheel cylinders, pick up a set of brake pads, both sides, and most likely the hardware. That way we have problems down the road, you know this has all been dealt with. Let's run to the auto parts store. All right guys, we're finally back. So what we're gonna go ahead and do, we're gonna do a complete rebuild on these rear brakes. Everything in here is coming out and new stuff is going in. Now, I am by no means a certified mechanic. I'm more of a DIY hobbyist. I love cars, I love learning things about cars. So I'll typically tackle things like this by myself. So if you wanna try it out, I'll show you guys steps you can utilize. But again, if you're uncomfortable, Brakes are the most important things you can ever work on on your car. So leave it up to the professionals if you feel that's necessary because more important than going is stopping. But anyways, if you are to do this yourself, some things you're going to need. First off and foremost, you're going to need to bleed your brakes when we're done because we are replacing the wheel cylinder. Also, brake clean. This is completely covered in brake dust. We gotta clean all that off. As far as tools go, you're gonna need a size E8 star socket. I'm not sure exactly the name of these type of sockets. E8 is what you're going to need to pull this cylinder out. Going down the line, some copper anti-seize. Also, in order to remove some of these springs, they do make a complete drum brake tool kit, but you really don't need it. Get yourself a pair of vice grips, these needle nose vice grips, as well as some regular ones. That's essentially all you need along with some flathead screwdrivers. 13 millimeter wrench and then for the back to bleed the valve a 5 16 wrench so the first thing we're going to do is remove this top hardware i'm going to pull that spring off all these other brackets that's going to come out and then the shoes will then follow now most importantly i forgot this before you begin take a lot of photos um, i've learned this the hard way take a bunch of photos of what everything looks like before you begin that way when you're putting it all back together you know what it should look like when you finish And as we begin, as far as protection goes, make sure you guys are being smart. Wear eye protection. Be careful what you're breathing in. Brake dust and brake parts cleaner are really bad for you to breathe in. Eye protection, a lot of this stuff can fling off, especially these springs. Be smart, be careful. All I have right now is some latex gloves. If you guys have those black, more durable gloves, use those. All right, so that was the easy part, and as I pull it off, here's a suggestion for you guys. As you remove the hardware, go ahead and lay it out how it was installed on the drum. That way, when everything's out in front of you, you can, in fact, take your new stuff, line it up the similar way, and then you put it back on in reverse order. Now, the next step is to remove these two. The actual name of it, I'm not exactly sure, but they have a tremendous amount of spring load. So be extremely careful when you're pulling this off. I smashed my finger on the other side. Then I'm gonna take some vice grips and a screwdriver, remove that from this hole here, and then this shoe will come right out. All right, there's one shoe, and then the other shoe is a little more of a pain in the butt. So let's look in closer because the emergency brake cable is still hooked up. We've got to push that out in order to remove the second shoe. All right, so here's the cable for the emergency brake. As you can see right there, there's a head on that which keeps it in place. Now what you need to do, this is turned over upside down. So the shoe is installed like this. You can turn it this way. Then you take a flathead screwdriver 
and push this headpiece down into there. It will then go through here and then be removed out the back. There you go. There's your second shoe. All right, so the shoes and hardware have all been removed. Before we continue on, we need to clean all this up. Fun thing about drums is everything that comes off the brakes gets captured inside the drum. That's why we have brake dust just lining everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take a simple wire brush, clean all of this up. The most important part is these six contact points. Make sure those are completely clean. We're gonna put a little bit of copper anti-seize back on these six points to make sure it has some free flowing, unrestricted travel. We're also gonna be replacing this wheel cylinder here. But first and foremost, we're gonna scrub all this up. So here's a nice little time lapse of that fun project. So next step, we're gonna pull this wheel cylinder out, install the new one. We have two E8 bolts at the back side and also the brake line to remove. We're gonna go ahead and replace this really quickly because the brake line will continue to leak brake fluid until you put the new wheel cylinder in. All right, and there is our new wheel cylinder. If you are to spill any brake fluid, just wipe it up immediately because it will cause paint to fade really badly. Let's go ahead and start reinstalling the shoes and hardware. So before we reinstall the brake pad, we have our copper anti-seize. Those six points I mentioned earlier, we need to put just a little bit of copper anti-seize up. Don't put a lot because this is a kind of capped off system that brake dust will cling to the anti-seize. So just a little bit on the six points to reduce some of the friction. So we have the emergency brake cable all hooked up there. I have vice grips hooked on this side. The reason being, if you're pushing this bracket over the cable, it'll tend to want to push back out of the, the whole hub assembly. So what the vice grips are doing is holding it in place. That way I can get all set and then we can remove the vice grips because we're all good to go. main blue pieces in. This was a lot more difficult than the other side for some reason, but we can now focus in on the hardware at the top. We have these three main pieces. We're going to install them in reverse order as we pulled off. We're first going to install this piece and then this bracket and then lastly the spring. All right, you guys, last step is to reinstall the brake drum. Now, the adjustment screw right here is gonna be really important here. We're gonna slide the brake drum over. You want the brake drum to be perfect on the brake shoes. Now, there's gonna be a slight, slight rub, but you don't want it to grab, but you don't want it to spin freely. It will self-adjust, but you wanna get it as close as you can prior to assembling everything back together. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna clean the inside of the drum, make sure it is perfectly clean where the surface meets the pad. And as you can see there, yeah, there's a lot of crap on there. We went ahead and had the drums turned. We didn't 
replace them. There was no need to buy brand new drums. They had very little wear on them at all. So we're gonna go ahead and just reuse what we had with a fresh turn. <laughs> I'm gonna take this adjustment out just a little bit. In order to adjust these outward, you just take your screwdriver, put it there at the notch, and pull it upward. And as you pull it upward, these two pieces will separate and it'll push outward on the shoe. All right, so we're now gonna take one lug and tighten this on all the way, just to push the brake drum flushly up against the hub. We are finally done installing the brake shoes and the brand new brake hardware. We are good to go for another very long while. Brake drums last a very long time. We're gonna go ahead and call it a night tonight. I wanna do this correctly, take my time on it because brakes, again, are the most important thing you can work on on your vehicle. You need it, do it correctly and never rush it. It is late, this project's taking kind of all day between running in the house and moving the camera around. It did take some time. So we'll see you guys bright and early in the morning. We're gonna bleed the brakes reassemble everything and then we'll be good to go for a very long while maybe seven days because i'll find something else to tear apart see you guys in the morning and welcome back guys so the first thing we need to do is refill the reservoir we actually went from about halfway mark to below minimum so we're going to fill this up with dot three fluid and as we bleed the brakes we're going to need to refill that a few times so fill that up i'm going to get my wife out here because we're going to do it the old-fashioned way with uh someone pushing the brakes as i bleed them so Let's fill this up. We're gonna start from the furthest wheel from the reservoir. There's a few different methods and a few different recommendations. Sometimes your ABS is mounted in the back and then you wanna start over here, but cookie cutter method, start with the furthest wheel from the reservoir to bleed. And what we're utilizing is just this simple hose here and it's a little bit too big, so I've placed a zip tie on it and you wanna put it on this bleeder valve. Now you're gonna slip the hose over this section and how it's gonna work is I'm gonna open the bleeder valve by turning this counterclockwise. I'll then tell whomever is sitting in the driver's seat to press on the brakes. They'll press on the brakes and any air and some fluid will come out. And then I will close the valve once again and then they'll let off the brakes. We'll do that over and over and over until all of the air has been removed from the brake lines and then we'll go to the other side. Now, when you press the brakes, an important part is to have this hose facing upward or going upward first. The reason for that, air travels upward with fluid. So if you have the hose downward like this and you press the brakes, air and fluid get released, there's a chance that the air bubbles will travel back up the hose and go right back into the wheel cylinder. You don't want that. Babe? Hey, babe? Babe? Hey, can you come help me? I scared my wife. She thought the truck fell on me. All right, press it, slow and firmly. Let up. Press. The brakes have been bled. We are good to go. No air is in the lines anymore. I turned the truck on for a quick moment, put it in drive, let it run for just a quick second, making sure the brakes actually did apply and got everything set in. Since I did that, I went ahead and pulled the drum back off to ensure everything set in place as it's supposed to and those springs popped off, anything crazy. Everything looks good. So from here, time to bolt the wheels and tires back up, torque everything down the spec and we are about done. And once we do that, we'll do a little reveal video for you guys as we always do on this channel. So let's get these big old wheels and tires mounted back up. Oh, also quick garage update. I don't know if you guys noticed, my wheels and tires are gone. Those ugly chrome things that we had here have been sold. They're gone if you wanted them. Sorry guys, no longer available. They're gone. They will no longer be going on the truck. Do not worry. There's never been so much mutual hatred towards anything on the channel besides those rims. All right, guys, it's been a long project, but everything is torqued to spec. And if you didn't see Instagram, believe it or not, we are the first truck in the world sponsored by, not, not really. What do you think? Nike, interested? Hit me up. I'm your man. 
broaden your portfolio, go more than sports apparel and shoes. So we're gonna take a quick lap around the neighborhood, make sure everything's working properly, come back, make sure there's no fluid leaks, and we'll be good to go for another week. Guys, that's gonna do it for today and as usual a project that takes 10 times longer than it really should that's the reality of DIY things never go according to planned and especially in this garage on this channel I'm hoping the wheel cylinders were the problem to begin with because I was leaking brake fluid I think that was the problem we're gonna keep a very close eye on that reservoir up there and make sure we're not losing any fluid over the next few weeks if you are interested in seeing that drum to disc conversion leave it in the comments below it is something I'm considering if they make a kit for it we'll definitely take a look also if you are a representative of Nike in any way shape or fashion and want to expand your portfolio into something broader than just apparel and shoes and athletics I'm your man but anyways guys that's gonna do it for today until next time y'all take care Aloha and enjoy.